Okay. Uh, my areas of expertise is around uh, big data, analytics, Google data warehouses, enterprise applications, etc. So, uh, in today's uh, talk, we will be going through some of the um, uh, some of the utilities that around Hadoop that makes. Uh, I mean, some of the tools that you can use to build uh, better applications quicker uh, in, a, in a faster way. So uh, to set a context, I mean, and here, here, is the, here is the agenda for today. We will be uh, talking about some of the evolving data access patterns and how is uh, Hadoop as important aspect of these data access patterns, uh, data processing patterns, and some of the shortcomings and how the other tools in the Hadoop ecosystem is addressing those uh, shortcomings and uh, some other com commercial and open source utilities of interest which you might want to keep an eye on. And then the trends in the industry and the event plan towards the end we will we'll have our question and answers. So uh, to set a context, uh, uh, you must have, I mean those who are uh, uh, reading through the internet articles and the other artifacts must have come across some of these terms like the data lake, uh, data hub, or extended data warehouse with respect to big data and analytics. So these, uh, these are, I mean, I would call them as uh, data processing or analytics patterns. And they all deal with big data in some or the other way. As, and uh, most of all these names seem to be relatively intuitive. They are all collecting data, analyzing data, doing something with the data. So uh, is, it, is it something new? I wouldn't think so because we have been doing data processing for quite some time. But what, what has changed in this, uh, in this region? I mean, why is there is a, a fuss about it? Why is people talking about that? So um, as an architect, when I, when I look at these problems, that is the big data, data analytics, or data lake, or extended data warehouse, I, instead of the first, I see three three big things that's happening in the industry. That is, you have you have a data warehouse. Uh, almost all enterprises have a data warehouse where you collect data, analyze data, run reports, and do all all, all kinds of stuff. To that data warehouse, you're actually adding two more two big architecture blocks. One is the big data, and another the second component uh, is the following component is the fast data. So these, these two building blocks is getting added into your enterprise data warehouse. It's actually uh, creating a big interruption in the market. It's, it's creating a big change in the way people process data, analyze data, and, and use the data. So um, data warehouse technology has been there for a long time. There, there are pioneers like uh, Greenplum, Teradata, and IBM, almost all vendors has good products in there. And uh, they are also building up the tools and technologies to address the big data and fast data. When you say big data, I guess it's, it's uh, th there's uh, three quality characteristics of big data. This is the volume, velocity, and variety. I'm sure you must have heard of that. Using, I mean, if, if your data meets these three characteristics, that's you have a large volume, you have uh, data coming in a fast pace, and you have a different kinds of data, a different variety of data, that's what you call it big data. And I guess the fast data is it's more about uh, the, the fast paced data coming in. You must have heard about the terms like the complex event processing and stream processing kind of scenarios. That's what is addressed in the scenarios of big data. But in, in this talk, what we're trying to see is what is the common element that is that you can use to tie uh, the data warehouse, big data, and fast data, and how can you make something good, some good use of that? So that the common element uh, between uh, among all the three is, I would say, Hadoop. Uh, enterprises or companies like Pivotal, IBM, or Teradata have uh, implemented products and platforms such a way that you can have one single platform where you can handle all the data warehouse, big data, and fast data. So, okay, there are the platforms, people have, there are three architecture components and there are platforms which is supporting this. Now what, 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 what is different, what has changed in that? And what should I be looking for? 
So in my, my opinion, um, what, what we have been doing with all those three uh, architecture building blocks was we were building business applications of different kind, it, be it a business intelligence report, sometimes it's an enterprise application, an analytics application. We've been building that to make sense out of the, that data. But they kept on generating data. These business applications, say if it is a, a commerce, e-commerce application, reservation systems, eBay's, Amazon's, they all are generating data of different kinds about the users, about the, the servers which is serving the request, all kinds of data is being generated. Now, we've been, and, and uh, it has been happening for a while, we've been gathering that data, analyzing that data to make better decisions. And I guess that's what we all do pretty much on a daily basis. That is, get some, build some sort of applications using some kinds of data that you collect from by some means, it could be a requirement by a requirement analysis, maybe a business analyst telling you, maybe you do an industry research, but at the end of the day, you collect the data, analyze them, and build applications. Now, we've been doing this thing for a long time. We've built lots and lots of enterprise applications and stuff like that. What we were lacking, or the recent trend is that, the agility, the speed at which you build these things has changed, significantly changed. That is, the pace at which you build applications. These days, you must have heard of, uh, I mean, I've, I've heard that uh, people who join Facebook on the day one, you will have to do a build and release by end of the day. That is, you just walk into the company, morning you write code, before you sign off, you have to push that code into production. The pace at which they build and release code is, is tremendous, it's really, really fast. And as you know, that the amount of data that is being generated by applications, I mean, people, when you talk about big data, they all talk about the, uh, the social media data, the sensor data. The amount of data that's coming in and the data that's available for you to process has increased. And so is analytics. So that if you can get through this cycle in a very agile, in a very quick way, the likelihood of you becoming a successful business is really, really high. So the, the point I'm trying to make is, for some reason, the thing is okay. The point I'm trying to make is that if you are agile, there's a good chance that you can remain profitable. The profitability of lots of companies. I was I used to work for a for a, um, a control system company named Honeywell International, where they used to make you know thermostats and etc. You must have heard the m amount of the company loss in past five years because of the innovation that came in the analytics market. The, the new anal analytics-based companies, the kind of products that's coming up. I mean, there, there are lots and lots of examples like that. So what, why did those such companies are losing big time is because this factor, the agility, the pace at which they are able to use the data, make some sense out of that. So that's a problem that we're trying to tackle in this talk. When I say agility, I, 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 meant, uh, I, meant, I mean that the turnaround time the amount of time that you spend to analyze data and make some sense out of that, the amount of time that you, the, the application takes to process the data, and the amount of the amount of data that you can put into the system in a second, in, in, in a minute or a, in a sub-second. If, if you have a platform which can address all these three concerns, I believe that you, know, you can be a very successful business in, in a very short time. And, and, uh, and I, as I mentioned, um, We've been doing this data analytics, uh, collecting data, building applications for a long time. And, and uh, uh, especially the, the business intelligence applications. And I also mentioned that Hadoop can be a component which can connect all these three, the, the big data, fast data, and the data warehouse. Now, if you were to use Hadoop as the utility to build enterprise applications out of data warehouse, um, you must have come across various limitations of that. That's what we are trying to address in this talk. As you know, Hadoop is, uh, I mean, those, how many of you work on Hadoop? And, I mean, is there any Hadoop MapReduce programmers, developers? Hadoop, Hadoop, yeah, we have one Hadoop. How many of you are uh, Oracle database developers, those who know Oracle database, uh, or some database of any MySQL? Okay, how many Spring fans? 
Okay. So um, those of you who don't know what Hadoop is, please go back and take a look at the video in the Spring User Group, uh, the last video, where we've uh, gone through in a very detail about what Hadoop is, where you can use it, how can you write a QC application, how can you deploy it, and build it, and stuff like that. So I'm not get, going to get into the details of Hadoop, but uh, just to uh, touch upon that, it's an open source project. It's a, it has two components, called as a distributed fault all in data storage, all also called as a Hadoop distributed file system or HDFS. And the second component is the, it's a batch processing component. It's, it's called as a, a map reduce. These are the two significant components of Hadoop. To get more details, please uh, take a look at the video of, of the last class. There's a lot of details about what commodity hardware is, etc. In, in last talk. And uh, recent years, Hadoop also has implemented solutions to analyze data on a real-time basis. When I say real-time, it's, it's within quotes. There are, uh, there are arguments about that. So uh, maybe if you want to know more details about that, we can spend, I can spend some time after the session. So those of you who know Hadoop, uh, uh, if you are an application programmer, if you're an application developer, how would you be building application this using this, this framework called as MacReduce? MacReduce uh, uh, is generally implemented using Java. Uh, the problem with the MacReduce uh, API, you remember the earlier days how, how we used to use, uh, use the servlet API, where you have a do get method, there's a uh, you know, do post method, this initialize method, destroy method. But have, are, are we using those methods these days? I think so. We, we are still using the API methods of servlet still, but it's just that we've built abstractions about that. So this MapReduce API is like a servlet API. It is like a servlet API. Or you could even compare this to, you remember the old days, the EJB 2.0 API? where you have the create, destroy methods, and etc. So the map reduce is like an EGP. It is an abstraction where you can build uh, you know, parallel applications real quick. So what happened to EJP 2.0? It has the spring or EJP 3.0 have taken over that. Why was that happened? Because they, it was not intuitive. It was not easy to build an EJP application and deploy that. Now, that problem exists with Hadoop too. The, let's, let's take an example of if you were to design a MapReduce code, this is how you would design it. What I want to do is, I want to just count the number of words in, 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 a, in a text, in a file or a novel, or a text file basically. It has to, the, the application designer has to go through four phases, or the, there's, there are four logical steps in that application, called as a split, map, shuffle, and reduce. Please don't, don't uh, spend time to understand this right now. If you listen to the earlier video, you'll get a lot more details. But what I'm trying to say is just to count the number of words in a small application, in, in a text file, you have to go through this many steps. And if you were to write a Java code for that, please don't even try to understand this code. I purposefully made it look small. There's a lot of boilerplate code you have to write, even to achieve a small task like that. This is a big problem that we do. The, the intuitiveness, the, 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 the time it takes for a developer to understand that and build some code. This is a problem that we are trying to tackle through this talk. So just, just imagine you are an application developer. Your, your, your business decided, decided to analyze uh, all the uh, all the web logs. They want to analyze the web logs in the company. They say, okay, here is a sample of a web log file. This is a one terabyte size. Can you please find out how many users are accessing this particular web server? As you know, the server log files has all that information from where the request came in, who requested it, at what time it requested, what is the application he accessed. It has all that information. All that you have to do is uh, write a small piece of code just imagine you you writing this kind of a code. It's going to be a three month project with lots and lots of bugs and uh, deployment issues. You need a cluster and whatnot. It's, it's it's going to be a big thing that's happening in the company. And the problem with uh, the big data and analytics kind of projects is the likelihood of you being successful is relatively low. If you talk to those people who works in the business intelligence projects, 
the amount of the number of business intelligence project fail is relatively high when compared to enterprise application. It is because the time they spend to understand and build something is relatively high. So you can't say, okay, there is this thing called as Hadoop. Give me a million dollars. I'll build something in another three months and come back to you and tell you whether it's successful or not. That's not acceptable anymore. Businesses want you, want you to build application that you get a requirement, I want to, something nice to be coming up in a three weeks. Three weeks to two weeks is a standard. They want to see something real, live, useful stuff coming up in less than, in a short period of time. If you write a code like this, I really, I mean, if you're a guy like this, I'm sure you, you wouldn't be sitting in this room, for sure. You'll be in some Palo Alto, some headquarters with some fancy Facebook company. So the amount of time that you spend to write and test this kind of a code is humongous. We need a better way. We need a different kind of tools. So the point I'm trying to make is MapReduce is not an agile thing. It is not that it's a bad thing. It, it's really good, but we really don't have time or patience to do this kind of coding anymore. How do, how do we do it better? That is when, so before we all talked about this, uh, Facebook has uh, Facebook and, uh, and Yahoo, they've been facing this problem. They had the exact same problem. The developer says, or the project team says, I have, I'll take uh, six months to analyze the Yahoo search engine. It was not acceptable. They built a tool, and they gave a very, very shabby name to it, called as Pig. So at the end of this talk, what, I, what, what I'm hoping to do is that you as an application developer without understanding the Java, MapReduce, and all that, all that stuff, you should be able to develop a small application which is useful for your business in a very short period of time using one of these technologies. That's, that's my target. So if you have uh, questions from that friend, that is from understanding friend, please uh, you may ask. So pig is a data flow language. Unlike other, uh, it's not a programming language. It is only to control data flow. When I say data flow language, it only helps you to get data, do some data manipulation, write the data back into some sources, some, some of the database sources. And it was, again, uh, it, it works on top of Hadoop. So how the uh, JSF works on top of Servlet API? It's the same way. So all the complexities of the servlet requires, uh, you know, the, the context and everything is hidden from you. You have to say button not click. Things happen. Similarly, Apache Pick works on top of MapReduce. Internally, there are lots of code is generated. We don't care. And the language which Pig uses is generally called as Pig Latin. Don't get confused. It's as simple as a shell script or a PL SQL script. Um, looks like uh, the, 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 this tool was given the name PIC because it can take any kind of data. It can analyze all kinds of data. And it, it can deal with all kinds of data formats. It can write into all kinds of format. And can, I heard that's the reason why they call it PIC. Otherwise, I don't see it. So it's an amazing tool. And, uh, and, and, and I guess the, the, the last one, my numbering is poor. The last point, the, the faster development life cycle. The amount of time that you spend to build a productive code is significantly less. See, just, just, just imagine, I want to count the number of words in a novel, in, in a file. Say, for example, you have a one terabyte size file, and you want to count the number of words in that. Let's, say, let's understand. Let's not worry about how do you install this pig and all that. If you want to do that, Go to, I mean, there are a lot of options. One option is go to pivotal.com and you can download a virtual machine. Pivotal uh, provides a virtual machine which has all this component installed. Or you can go to uh, hodonworks.com, they have a virtual machine. Cloudera has it. Pick whichever you want. It's immaterial, the version is immaterial. Download one of the virtual machine, start the virtual machine, it has all installed. Please don't waste your time in downloading and installing all this. It makes no sense makes no sense to uh, do all that. Provided that you have a virtual machine installed and we are all good to go, this is the code I would be writing. Let's say words equal to, let's, let's call words available. It is not available. It has a different naming convention being used. Words equal to, load is a keyword. What you're trying to say is, load this particular file. 
It could be a terabyte size file, a megabyte size file, doesn't matter. Load a file using a pick storage. Why I'm using pick storage? What I'm saying is, while you load the file, every time you find a slash t, that seems to be a line break. So everywhere you see a slash t, load some, some data. That use slash t as the delimiter. And then do an order by on that, that words. The variable words is being ordered by by com. Looks 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 very similar to uh, this line looks very similar to a shell script. This line looks very similar to a database uh, query file, right? I mean the PL SQL script. So now you order by words and then you get a new variable. And then you say limit sorted words, which means get pick only the top ten records. Write the top ten records into a file. So you read a file, do an order by, do a get only the some top ten records, write it into a into a file again. That's it. That's it. It's, isn't it a very trivial? Isn't it very easy to understand? What happens in the background? When you run this code, this piece of code in the in in in, in Hadoop, as I told you, pick works on top of Hadoop. All these statements like load, filter, join, group, spawns a MapReduce job. The same way, when you click on a JSF button, how it calls a service API, it spawns a series of MapReduce job. How many jobs has to be spawned? All that is flexible. You can can configure that. Is that making sense? So the idea is that you write very less code, very less productive code, but you can get a result real quick. Say, for example, uh, I, I'm trying to compare the pig script. Say, for example, you want to analyze a terabyte-sized uh, log file. Your first line would be something like this. Weblog equal to load a data using pig storage. Wherever you find, you can, you can replace these characters with a space or semicolon. The idea is to load a file and use that as a delimiter to, uh, to identify the contents in the file. So I'm assuming that my log file has uh, uh, three tabs. And the first, as soon as I hit the first tab, I'll get the host name. When I hit the next tab, I'll get the date. And when I hit the, the last tab, I'll get the URL. It's not necessary that log file comes in this fashion. It comes, uh, I mean, you might want to use different format depends on the log file. If you were to use simulate the same thing in a database query, this is how it would look like. And if you were to write a map reduce code, I can't really fit that in it because it's a lot of code. So the, the syntax is very, very, very straightforward and simple. And uh, here's another example of uh, uh, another example, which is extracting extracting a particular date. I want to get all the users who came in this particular day. If your business asks, okay, here is a weblog, get me all the users who access uh, this particular date. This is a query. As you can see, there are new functions available for date transformation, string manipulation, etc. And there are user-defined functions too. <coughs> so that makes your life a lot easier. All the frequently used uh, data processing can be done through the user-defined functions. If you were to do the same thing in a SQL query, this is how it would look like. Forget about query. You don't want to do that anymore. And finally, store the result back into a file. Store your final result into a, a data file. Again, this is not something that you can achieve in a query, but if you're using a tools like Hive, you can do that. That is, uh, in the command prompt, you say Hive hyphen E, which means execute a query. This is a query, and write the result into an output file, which, which is achievable. But in a conventional uh, SQL interface, it doesn't provide that. So I, I, I believe that this syntax is very, very simple. I mean, if you know how to write an Excel function, you can very much understand this script. So what PIG is used for is generally for rapid prototyping. You get the data, make some good sense out of that real quickly, and simple ETL, uh, the extra transformation, et cetera. And I, I, I find this as the best use of PIG. You want to build a cute analytical model. When you say analytical model, people always uh, imagine it with the lots of mathematical algorithms, complex mathematical algorithms, and so structure like that. You can do that in PIP, there's no issue. But if you want to get cute and dirty kind of an application, PIP is the right tool to do. Uh, 
but the at times causes memory error like you have lots and lots of data coming in and you if you haven't allocated enough memory for a script to execute there's a good chance that it can throw some memory error at times it gets drunk and get confused between the null and space so you need to be careful about that you can create a nested statement sometimes it get confused about whether i should execute the outer statement or inside statement so that's some tricks out there and again for you to change the date formats uh, say the data is coming from a main thing you want to convert the date format uh, the user defined functions can be improved so um, so you need to keep all these things in mind when you jump in to process a large volume of data. These are, I mean, there are workarounds for all this. I'm not saying that these are you know, showstoppers, per se. <coughs> so um, PIC will reduce the amount of time that you spend to develop a process a SAP application code. Now, another utility that uh, MapReduce provides is Apache High. Apache High is, again, uh, Facebook's contribution to, to the project. So Facebook's uh, uh, thought process was, SQL has been there for a long time. We all know how to write SQL. There are thousands and thousands of people who know that. So if I can expose a small interface through which I can process this whole data in the SQL, wouldn't it be cool? They, they believe that it's cool, and they built a small tool called as Apache High. And again, it has a very, very funny we are representing that. So, say for example, you want to find out how many times Shakespeare used the word love in his novel Hamlet. And if you have the entire novel Hamlet in the text file, this is how you do. You say, create an external table. It looks like a table outside of the purview of uh, Hive, called as word count. And that those are the columns. And delimited fields. I mean, uh, you say that in, in this text file, every time you find a slash t, split there. And this is where the file resides. So take this file and, and make it as a table. When I say a table, every time you find a slash t, that, that means that's a column. And run a count star, then you say sum of, I mean, it's a classical, simple, easy to understand query. All that you have to do is load your file into this particular location. And now you can query on that. That's an amazing utility. But the, the limitation here is that you should be able to represent every requirement in terms of query, which may not be practical all the time. So, and I mentioned it's again, it works on top of Hadoop, uh, which means there is a map reduce jobs being created. So for every create statement, there is a map Maybe if you, if you have used a group by, an order by, or a join, or a union, you can do pretty much any SQL-ish operation. It is completely not SQL yet. We are getting there. But you can do pretty much any operation in time. It's awesome. And there's another project going on called as Apache Stinger to improve IC performance of HUD. So that's, that's likely to come um, in, in another three to four months of time. Then you'll see high has a lot more user defined functions and uh, so it, it looks like a database so a lot of people tends to use it for an OLTP application but it's not meant for that it's not and hive queries there's always a latency of a, a second or three, a one second to three seconds unlike your I mean sometimes Oracle queries also takes that long I understand but I'm talking about a lot you're coding a large volume of data there's always a latency and uh, it does not support uh, the ACID transactions or row level inserts, uh, etc. It's always a bulk insert in terms of files. So as said, as, uh, uh, just, just like a, a pig, you can still get into uh, out of memory errors at times. Sometimes uh, debugging a query is a bit of a pain. People say that. And he also has the same problem. This understanding between null and uh, you know, I don't know why they're not they're not fixed. Maybe Zuckerberg is not interested in that anymore. Um, the difference between a Hive and a RDBMS, there is always uh, you always expect a result in some second when it's RDBMS, but Hive it has a minute thing. Why is that? Please watch our earlier video. 
and doesn't support transaction. There's no uh, role level insert, but you have a bulk bulk data. If you have a bulk data. There's a file appending kind of solution. And uh, stuff like a primary key. It's it's at the end of the day, Hive is a file. Hive uses a file, so it's not a database. It's giving you a, a, a way, an easy interface for you to access data. But data types wise, uh, you know, you don't find the date data type, which I find it's a quite quite a big of a problem because a lot of my analysis requires date kind of date field. Uh, but there are workarounds to get the date inside. It's those bit of pain. You can do that. One of the big problem with the Hadoop is that, as you know, there is no update. So if you have to update a record, a lot of us, a lot of times, what we do is insert a new record and somehow archive the old record, or keep both the records and use only the latest one. So update is technically possible, but you cannot take a row and update. That that concept doesn't exist in Hadoop. I guess it's more to do with Hadoop. It's not a limitation of Hive or Pig per se. It's a limitation. I wouldn't call it a limitation. Um, you can argue always. So these are the two utilities that you have. It's an open source utility, just well documented. There are lots and lots and lots of examples. There are bugs too. I mean, there are lots and lots of bugs too. People are fixing it much faster than uh, when compared to other tools. These are some of the fast evolving tools which would help you to get started real quickly. You really don't have to worry about Mac review setting up the cluster, the, the uh, out of memory exceptions and all that. Load the data. Write a script. If it, if you don't if you don't like a script and instead you like query, go write a query. That's it. Pink and Hive makes your makes the data to get started data analysis. These are the two best tools. And uh, some other tools that you may want to watch, since you guys are uh, Java developers, uh, is uh, I mean, I'm not going to get into the details of the the rest of the tools because we are short on time. Uh, Apache cascading. It's again a Java library where you can write if else. It's, it's a programming language like structure. You have all the goodness of Java and Hive and Pig. You can like query like structures, you can like uh, uh, control flows, you can write if else loops and stuff like that. Uh, you might want to take a look into that. Not now, once you are comfortable with a Pig and Hive, the next thing that you might want to look into is cascading. Uh, it, it's again a catching up momentum. It's, it's really, really amazing. Well, it still has some few small, small bugs to be fixed, but uh, there are guys out there that fix it. Don't worry, they'll fix it soon. So, um, and then uh, Apache Storm is. Uh, so we we talked about uh, three architectural building blocks. One is the data warehouse, the big data, and fast data. Apache Storm is uh, more towards the fast data aspect, where you have large volume of data coming in a real fast pace like uh, Twitter feeds or machine logs kinds of data. Apache Storm has built-in capabilities. Uh, you want to know on a real-time basis how many how many callers are calling into to my cell phone tower. Apache Storm can address that kind of concerns. Or, or those who are familiar with online machine learning, it is still an improvising field, but uh, there's a lot of uh, things that are happening. So these Apache Storm is another uh, project is again uh, one of the limitations of all these big data tools are the maturity. It's uh, a lot of times, when compared to other tools uh, out there, their maturity is always questionable, but they're improvising in a real fast pace. The adoption rate is really, really high. The number of people who are finding bugs and fixing bugs are relatively more when compared to other commercial tools. So the, the amount of innovation that's going into these tools are enormous. Um, and finally, the most favorite part. So anything that comes with the Spring, I'm sure you guys are interested. Spring has an answer for all the problems. In the last talk, we talked about Spring data for Hadoop. That is to build uh, Spring data, Spring, I mean, uh, Hadoop applications using Spring. Whether it is a batch process application, stream application, data import, export, Spring has an answer called a Spring XD. Uh, I've requested Mike uh, to arrange a talk in Spring XD. It's a, it's a relatively new entrant in, uh, in, in, in Spring family. But I strongly believe that this is going to change the way you 
build the application with big data. So now, now you once the Spring XD come into establishes completely, you will be able to write code such a way that use Apache Hadoop. So I have Apache Hadoop, I have Storm, and I have MySQL database. I write my code. When I deploy, maybe I deploy it in Pivotal Hadoop using Oracle database or a, some place database of your choice. So it will, a Spring XD will give you a very transparent interface through which you can build your application, visualize them, or analyze them, and deploy them in whatever platform of your choice. Just the way you build Apache, I mean, uh, code on Apache TomGet and deploy it on, on, on WebSphere. Similarly, you'll be able to build a code on Apache Hadoop and deploy it on, on, on a distribution of your choice. It has, it has lots and lots of capabilities built in it. It's, it's maturing the, the components in that. It, again, Spring XD is completely using the Spring integration, Spring Batch, Spring Data for Hadoop internally. It is just providing a, a wrapper above that to make this whole coding thing faster. So uh, keep keep watching this space. I'm sure this is going to make a big change in the defense market. But otherwise, you know, there's a, and then the, uh, again, uh, if, if I say that uh, there is an X tool better than Y tool, it's just a matter of three months. They'll catch up. All tools for that market. All tools in big data market, they're catching up real fast. I mean, the, the, the difference is it doesn't last longer. So I don't want to make a comment on Spring XD is better than anything else, or Storm is better than Spring XD. I don't want to make any comment on that, because it's just a matter of time by the time they, they uh, adjust, they level the features. But in, in Spring, as you know, we have the number of people coding and testing Spring as much more than when compared to anybody else. So the, 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 the amount of changes, the amount of innovation that you get for free is a lot more. Um, and few other tools might be of your interest is uh, Pivotal Hawk Hadoop with Query. It is uh, you can get you can say for example you have a terabyte of data sitting in your Hadoop, and uh, there's this this engine called as Hawk Pivotal, uh, which is my uh, my company's product. Um, this product is capable of returning uh, processing a query in a less than a second in a subsequent response time. So if you want to process a large volume of data in a subsequent through a query, offers you choose choice. IBM, IBM Big SQL, it is not completely SQL yet, but they're getting there. Uh, eventually, you will see the uh, IBM Big SQL is start competing with Pivotal, Pivotal Hawk. Apache Drill is a, a recent entrant in there. They're also fighting for their space. Uh, I'm sure most of you are familiar with the uh, Impala. Clouder is actually really, really working hard on that. Uh, they, they are fixing the bugs really, really fast. And as I mentioned, Apache Stinger project, there are two projects. One is to improvise the, uh, the, the, uh, the Hive database. As I told, Hive has a problem that the latency, the amount of time it takes for a Hive query to get your result is sometimes uh, really frustrating. Sometimes it goes into minutes, 10 minutes. And this, it's not something that we want. So there are people who are working on that to make it better, to, to do that thing faster. So um, my request is please go back, download one of these virtual machines. Uh, you know, and there are lots and lots of examples available for big and high. Try that. It's, it's a very, very easy to understand tool and uh, lots of documentation. Please don't get uh, held up with the map reduce complexity. You know, I, I completely understand as a developer a lot of times even I, I get, uh, I, I want to write code. And then I don't consider script to be code, XML to be code. But you know, <coughs> no business wants you to spend uh, three months time in building some, <coughs> analyzing some web log, which they don't even know whether it's going to bring some value to you. These kind of tools would because as, as you can see, the syntax is very simple. You have the, the application development infrastructure that you may be able to download and use. It. So I strongly encourage you to go and use that. So that's the end of my uh, talk. So if you have any questions, I'm more than happy to address right now.